I found some lung specimens, which I really don't use very often anymore. I think the last time I used it was to put a picture up at the Freedom website. I used to use them in clinics, but over the years I just felt they were being handled too much and I didn't want to destroy them. And I, when groups were getting actually really large, it was hard for people in a large group to see these without passing them around and I got to a point I just didn't want to do that anymore. But I thought, well, for video, this is, this is a good use for them. So they're, they're going to get their third life here. Their first life was that they were part of a human being. They were their breathing apparatus. Second life was when I first started using these, and if I'm not mistaken, I got these before I was doing stop smoking clinics when I was doing smoking prevention programs, and that was school-based programs, and I was doing those for about four or five years before I was doing clinics. So they were originally being used for the purpose of trying to get, you know, kids usually not to take up smoking. And uh, then I used them in clinics for a short time period, and I'm going to use them one more time here. Again, these are lung slices, and I'm going to move off camera so I can give the maximum exposure to the lung slices themselves. And what it's showing is a non-smoker's lung, and you can see it's pretty it's pretty clear. It's uh, not clear, but what I mean, but it's clean. There, there's very little uh, tar buildup on here, particulate matter buildup. This is a city dweller's lung. You can you know see little pollution spots here and here. And again, I'm not sure how they're going to show up in the video, but there there's little specks of pollution. But I want you to compare this to what a smoker's lung has a much greater tendency to appear like. And again, the difference between these two lungs is dramatic. Not just the discoloration. The discoloration is, is, let me get this in over here, the discoloration is a problem. But the real issue that we're seeing here is how the lung is basically ripped out of shape. This is the same area of the lung. It was uh, marked the medial uh, area, and so this non-smoker's lung and smoker's lung theoretically should be looking the same, except for the impact that smoking had. You can see, and I'm going to try to come in a little bit closer to here with here, that the tissue, especially like in this area up here, is basically ripped out of shape. This lung was no longer able to do anything for oxygen transport in that area. Those were tissues that were just basically destroyed from cigarette smoking. But even the lower portions of the lung, if you look at the size of these two uh, areas, this lung has become enlarged. And this is the problem when we're dealing with chronic obstructive lung diseases like emphysema. The lung is literally ripped out of shape. Where the lung is supposed to have an elastic kind of capacity to it to be able to exhale air, this tissue which is pulling the lung back together becomes destroyed and this lung can no longer exhale air. So air basically is just trapped in here and it's no longer used for distribution of oxygen throughout the body. Once this tissue is destroyed, this cannot come back. Underlying lung tissue, when it's gone, it's gone. You can see the discoloration. The discoloration, again, the obvious damage from smoking, but the enlargement of the lung is really where the problem is. And uh, I'm having trouble here between the lighting and uh, just how handling this. But anyway, you got the idea of what happens inside the lung from smoking. The way to minimize any future problems of of smoke causing this kind of destruction of your lung tissue and the deposits of, and again, while well, this person did not die of cancer, you could just see the deposit of chemicals that are in here and many of these chemicals were able to cause cancer. The way to minimize your risk of facing this kind of destruction, the breathing problems that go with it, and then the cancer risks that go with the chemicals too. The way to minimize all those risks is still to continue to stick with your personal commitment to never take another puff.